All right, y'all, today we are pruning our apple tree. We got a few apple trees here on the property here at Atlanta Harvest, and we are going to prune them for preparation for spring production. So apples, they'll get harvested probably about mid spring, mid to end of spring, the apples that we have here. Mm -hmm. And so this is a perfect time, especially while the tree is dormant, to get that pruning done. So if you want to learn how to prune an apple tree, this is the video for you. Shalom, welcome. So today we're going to prune an apple tree. This is about a 30 year old tree. So we're gonna go through, point out some things to you to look for, especially if you're dealing with older trees and just how to maneuver, manage and prune them. Right here, these are called sucklings. We're gonna start off here. Each year, new sucklings will be produced from a tree. They will not produce any fruit and they're really just taking up energy. Uh, the beauty of them is though, Depending on the size of them and the thickness, you can actually take these and turn them into additional trees. Um, but in this case, we're just gonna cut them off. So. Now that's actually a nice, a nice thick one, but yeah. maybe not as thick as something that we might wanna use. Exactly. Right? So Especially because of that, that, that first year new growth. Exactly. So clean up some of that. And I'll just do a little bit just to show you. So anything, like I say, it's coming up. It's very identif identifiable. Um, and that's it as far as that goes. So now we're gonna direct ourselves over to this side. If you look at this branch, and then you even look at this branch, you can see it even more. If there's exposed meat or exposed bark on the, uh, on the tree, then you know it's damaged. So this whole piece actually needs to come out. There may be some life still left in it, but when you look at the damage, if any considerable amount of fruit is produced on that, it's gonna snap it, it could be a danger, so forth and so on. Look I mean, it's looking it. pretty dead. It don't look like it's gonna grow nothing anyway. Exactly. I see you working with some pruners there. Uh, you gonna cut that dead tree with, with, uh, Definitely with those pruners? Definitely not using any pruners for this. You're gonna make sure the one to have the two is necessary. Uh, this is even still too big for loppers. This one you could probably cut with loppers, but with this you would either wanna use a chainsaw or a handsaw. Go ahead and shave it off. You wanna get it as close as possible to the main trunk of the tree, to the main stalk. And so then that way, you don't have a situation like this here, where you have this whole piece here that's just dead wood. So we're gonna wanna get it as close as possible, saw it off, nice clean cut, and then that way energy can be diverted into some of the healthier branches, and we can get more fruit. Uh, when pruning apple trees as well, just to show you as an example, if you have a situation where you have a branch that's coming across and touching another branch, you're gonna wanna cut that. this up please <laughs> speed it up uh, you don't want to cut that that's why you want to use the proper tools proper tools baby uh and so then that way it's not touching it promotes good growth but you can even see with this one but that's gone so yeah that whole one was coming down anyway yeah. but you got you want to make sure that you cut this properly yeah you I'm don't want to have it. yeah you don't want to you don't want to rip anything you don't want to have it um um um, some unintentionally exposed wood. And so we don't have a saw right now, but a saw is what you would go and attack that with. Now, moving on though. Moving on now, I'll show you right here. Taking a look at this. If branches are touching, it restricts airflow. It also put, uh, restricts sunlight. And then when fruit actually develops, it can cause disease and fungus and things. So this is a branch that we would want to take out. Why? Because as we can see, it's completely touching it. So we come in, we cut it right here. We need loppers. Cut this off, and so then that opens up all of this. We'd also want to come in and get any of the other ones that are going across and touching. And like I said, the reason that you want to do this is because you want as much air and sunlight to get in in order to produce a nice, healthy set of fruit. So we're looking for, we're looking for new growth. Obviously here on the big trunk, like we were cutting before, you can also see a lot of new growth up the tree. And generally, you know, you want to have a smaller tree that's easier to work with. But you also want to look for new growth here uh, at the base of the tree. Um, I think we've cut most of what was growing, but you'll see there are places where new uh, trees will try to develop off of the base of the tree. Oh, look, one that's very close to the bottom here. Just another one that we're going to go ahead and cut off. I mean, now, uh, in order to also promote healthy growth, um, in the same time that we're pruning the tree, we would fertilize as well. What does that look like? So for fertilizing your tree, 
the wingspan or the root span of the tree is as far out as the branches. Let me take a step back and show people how wide the branches are. Now, can you can you step to the edge of the branches of this tree? Okay, so where Shalomiel is standing right now is the extent of the branches. Now, this would generally be the extent of the roots for this particular tree. And so, and so why is that important? That's important because when you fertilize, you don't want to just throw a bunch of fertilizer up by the base of the tree, especially when it's stretching out in order to get nutrients and water. So by coming out here with the garden ring, scratching it up a little bit, just maneuvering, even exposing the roots a little bit, then we're able to come through with a good fertilizer. We use rabbit manure with mixed with a little chicken here. And we'd be able to come through and sprinkle that, that all the way around. We wanna do a layer really no thicker than an inch, but just a nice hefty layer all the way around. And so then that way, all parts of the tree are able to receive a nice boost. So what happens if you don't do it all the way around, you may see greater production or healthier production on one side of the tree as opposed to the other side. So in order to make sure that we have good balance, because what can end up happening is, if there's greater production on one side of the tree than to the other side, you can have a situation where the tree or the branch actually ends up snapping. And so then you end up damaging your trees. So you, everything is about balance in nature, as we know. And a simple one time, we could do that once or twice throughout the year. And just from doing that, we'll be able to see a considerable difference in our fruit production and the health of our trees.